Welcome to Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Nissan Project 370Z Challenge. Back in 2012, Nissan thought it'd be a great idea to ask the fans to design their dream 370Z using the Nissan Performance Facebook page to come up with their own Project Nissan story. Of course, a huge response and the end result has been very impressive. But of course, you need to put that car to a real performance test. And to do that, you need a challenger. So they went back to their Facebook fans and said, why don't you put forward your own Nissan project stories? And they had thousands of entries. Nissan narrowed it down to a top three and then asked the fans online to vote for their favorite car. So of course it was a true result of which car the fans wanted to see. Let's meet the cars. Well, I'm here with Stephen Lamb who had the enviable task of turning the fans dream car into a reality. Now, Steve, they wanted a lot of really cool stuff on this car. Tell us a little bit about it. They wanted a fast track car that you can almost even just drive to the track. So first we did the powertrain, then the exhaust, then we did the suspension and brakes, then we did the interior, then the exterior design. So here you are, you actually have created perhaps the ultimate 370Z. So it is time to meet the Challenger. My name is Gordon McSwain, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. My car is a 1970 240Z. I've always loved the style of the 240. I've got over three and a half years invested in this car. Every day I go to work, and then when I come home, my release is working on the cars. <laughs> you may obviously recognize instantly the iconic 240Z shape, but under the hood, you kind of let yes. the modern days take over. The first thing I wanted to do was to do an RB swap, which uh, is an engine that's out of a Skyline DTR. I'm getting 360 horsepower, 288 foot-pounds of torque, and it fits in there absolutely perfect. Everything really on the build was, I slowly went through methodically, and when I got tired of working on the rear end, I'd come up front and do something on the front end. When I first drove the car, my face hurt because I was smiling so much. How do you think your car will fare out when we put it through the exercises? Um, I, I, I think we have a chance. Spoke like a true champion. <laughs> but of course, this being Nissan, they couldn't just bring in any old driver to put these cars through their paces. No, they had to bring in one of their superstar drivers as the winner of the Nissan GT Academy. Honest, no one has ever driven the car except for myself. The 240 is owned and built by a guy as a lifetime passion. Uh, it's his baby. Do you feel some responsibility there? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be driving it with a lot of respect, but at the same time, uh, we're here to do a challenge and I'm gonna be driving it very hard. Our first challenge is what we're calling zero to zero, effectively a top speed line run. From the standing start here, you get up to the top speed you can by the mark and then emergency brake it to a stop. And the combined time as well as the top speed is what counts. Now, remember everybody, all the activities we're doing today are being driven by our professional driver, Steve, in a closed course with no public in attendance. So make sure you don't try them at home. Anyway, Steve is raring to go. So I suggest we let him do his stuff. As you can see, he's got first gear. And he's off. It's it. Whoa. Oh okay, it, does, it sounds pretty quick. <laughs> you can hear, he still had to fight for traction though. There's a lot of horsepower going to those rear wheels and you can yeah. see it breaking all the way. Yeah. And look at that. Your car's turned next. Nervous? <laughs> I'm nervous, yes. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> I thought I had a really good chance because it looked like Steve was really getting a uh, a handle on the launch of the car. And she's got great traction, good acceleration, perfect gearing, it's gonna do really well. And there she goes. Really nice. Yeah. But listen to that. Yeah. Right there, just before the shift, it got on the power band and it just, I mean, visibly, you can see her accelerating. Yeah. And then he has to brake. I saw Steve grabbing a lot of steering wheel and brake pedal at the end of the track trying to get it stopped and then I, I knew he was probably 
better wrestling with the car quite a bit, trying to get it slowed down. Break it down for us. First of all, the 370Z, what was that like? Uh, the brakes are probably the biggest difference. I mean, that car stops so fast. Uh, the brakes, you get a lot of feedback. You can feel the urgency of the applying the brakes, whereas uh, on a power brake car, you, there's a disconnect there. You push it, and the longer you leave it there, the more the pedal kind of floats down on you. But in an emergency situation, you can hit the brakes and you know that they're not going to lock up on it. Whereas this, you know, you push on it and then you start to feel one of the t wheels slide and then you, you got to back off a little bit. And that just costs, costs you time. The 240Z, uh, power-wise, I think they're really close. You know, the 370Z will make up in the braking what it lost anywhere else. The rules for the Hopkirk Challenge are as follows. From a standing start in this box here, the V-Box inside will record the first movement and set the timer going. As you make your way down through the course, high-speed cones to a left-hand turn at the end. As you make your way back, it's very important to control the weight transfer in the car because it's all about the finish. Stopping the car as fast as you can inside the box, and of course, that's when the time is recorded. So Steve, it sounds easy. Yeah, everything sounds easy, but to actually get it right, you know, it's always a challenge. Uh, the 370Z definitely has a lot of grip and the brakes on it are fantastic, so I'll be able to carry a lot of speed into the box. I thought, I have this, this is mine. I, I own this, this is gonna be great. Let's get ready to go off the line, very nice. Perfect wow. amount of wheel spin. Right up against the limiter, it's not worth going to second gear, especially with that turbo, but as he gets to the end, this is where he has to be precise. This is the e-brake just a bit to kick it around. Coming up through off the limiter. Very important to get the weight transfer of the car, otherwise you lose time by taking up too much ground. Whoa. And down to a beautiful Whoa. finish there. You could be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think I could be in trouble. He nailed it. He just hit it absolutely perfect. It was, it was beautiful to watch. Okay, just, see if he gets go. a good launch. Oh, that's a pretty good. good. Yeah. You're always just managing that application of the throttle, otherwise you're slow. Yeah. It's very tidy on the way down. Of course, the, yeah. you make up the time or lose it right there at the end. That is beautiful. Perfect, yeah. Now it's also on the way back about not going too fast on those early cones otherwise right. you get too much body weight transfer and of course you've got to stop it in the box. Very nice. I think that was the one. I think it did really well. I could see you having to work an awful lot harder in a 70s car just from the suspension side of things than you did in the modern one. Yeah definitely the, the steering wheel is pretty big in there it's just a stock one and there's no power steering so you really have to uh, wrench at the wheel to get it to go where you want. And of course, stopping it in the box with no ABS looked like that was the biggest challenge of everything. Steve locked up the brakes a couple times and was skidding, so I think we had enough uh, brake. I think we just didn't have enough traction, as much as the anti-lock brakes and the things on the 370Z. Next up, we have the timed autocross. Pretty simple, actually. Standing start, one lap, flying finish, and of course, it's timed but for our two contestants, maybe not so easy. It's all about speed, balance, and handling. Autocross is the affordable way for car clubs across America to Absolutely. go racing. Absolutely, there's hundreds of parking lots across the United States that every weekend are set up with cones and have tracks of all different you know, designs every weekend, and they got our, us weekend warriors go out and race on them every weekend. So it's not just for the new cars, it's also no. for the old ones. So I think this should be a really good test Absolutely. for both yep. vehicles. Yep. I figured I would win the autocross because the car was set up for autocross. And from what I'd seen Steve practicing the day before, he was doing really well. So you don't want to get too out of control right from the beginning. And we're waiting. Waiting. And there he's he off. Goes. Yeah. Now, it, every single inch counts on an autocross, doesn't yep. it? Absolutely. Every, he has to hit every corner, every line. Uh, With a penalty if you hit a pylon. So. Yep, absolutely. And this little negative camber corner here. Very nicely done. Very done. Good. But good. right now, all he's thinking about is getting a fast exit through yeah. here. It is a rolling flying yeah. finish. So. There you go. There you go. <laughs> wow. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. It was very close. The more he drove, the better he got for both cars. Well, I don't know about you, but the Project 370Z looked really impressive on the handling circuit here on the autocross. Of course, now it's the turn of your 240Z. Yes, it is. I think it's going to do very well. I do too. We'll see how it goes off the line. I mean, there's almost no difference as you head up to that first corner. Yep. No active handling or anything in this, no. so 
It's a much more organic way very of driving. Very visceral, yes, very visceral. He's very quick just there. Yeah. Now, of course, it's the first yeah. shoot to the end, which will be the yeah. telling moment. He can't stop, of course. He's ended up back at, <laughs> on the strip. He was just getting into a groove with the car, and it was just flying around there. I was very excited to see that. Well, this is it, the grand finale. And really, a single flying lap around a racetrack needs very little explanation of the rules. It really is driving in its purest form. And Steve, now you've obviously had the chance to put both the 240Z and the 370Z through their paces. I guess you've got a real feeling for what they can do. The 240Z actually out-accelerated out the 370Zs, and we have quite a long straightaway here. And there is a tight section in the back of the track, which the 240Z proved to be pretty good around the autocross course. So. Um, the brakes are quite a bit better, like I said before. Uh, it should be a pretty good match. So what one gains in one place and it loses in another, the other car will gain. So I think it's going to be very close. And of course, this really is a true test. Both cars have performed so well throughout. He doesn't know the results yet, nor does Gordon. But this will be really the decider. So why don't you get in the car and good luck, because I think Thanks. you're going to have to use all your online <laughs> skills right now. Yeah. Should be good. So this is it, it really is a big test. Uh, now on paper, just listen to that, on paper, a modern, state-of-the-art, one of the best sports performance cars out there, 370Z, really should do very well, shouldn't it? Absolutely, this? this is what it was built for right here. Well, he is coming past right now. Okay, that looks fast. When he came around the first turn, or the last turn, and went on the front straightaway, um, <laughs> that 370Z was all in butt. But of course, it's the braking that really can gain on really. Yeah, he goes he, a little deeper into the corner. Absolutely, yeah. he can carry that speed into yeah. the corner as he heads through that very tight twisty section back there yeah. into that end loop. Yeah. It's not about beating your car, it's just about getting the most out of each of the absolutely. cars. Yeah, and absolutely. then it'll get a true time yeah. result. Now, the final right hander onto this straight, you want to use all the road. And a bit more, yeah. of course. <laughs> and so as he comes up, snatch his third. We might stand over here next time. <laughs> that was fantastic. That was really good. The next one he's going to thrash to death is yours. <laughs> so Gordon, as we watch Steve heading off in your little car, there must be a lot of mixed thoughts in your mind because, you know, we've seen it perform so well today, but this really, the track test is the ultimate one. It is, it is. A, this is a good road course uh, and that's going to give her a chance to stretch her legs. You know every nut and bolt, every weld, so you know what she's capable of. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's still a big challenge when you put it up against a new car, isn't it? It's a 40-year-old car and um, we'll see how she does. 40-year-old car with a young heart. So. Yeah. All right, yeah. so he's obviously down the far end of the track right now, negotiating that. Um, what were your objectives when you built the car? What, what did you aspire I, I was, to be? I wanted to build a track car that I can drive to the track and race and be reliable, dependable, and uh, give hours and you know years of performance. Here we go. So obviously, flying start, and he's off. Oh, I hope he breaks down there. <laughs> mm. I tell you what, that must have felt very fast as he goes in. Yeah. But of course, the car really excels when it gets, uh, you know, the, the turbos come in and it really yeah. launches off the corner. But of course, you know, it's a very fine balance when you're driving a car that you come pretty familiar with, but on a track that necessarily you don't know that well. And you want to do a lap time. Remember, he's only got this lap. That's it. You want to do a lap time, but you don't want to get too much understeer. You don't want to get too much oversteer. Yet you want to kind of keep it all together so you can get a quick lap time. And as he comes on to, whoa, oh, as he comes on to the final straight, it looks fantastic. And he goes across. And now, of course, he's going to let the car cool down. Yeah. Um, 
and then it'll be the big I, moment of reveal. It looked really good. I really, really think he did a good job on that one. You no, know, she didn't break. She ran good. I was very proud of the way the car performed uh, overall after the competition. I couldn't be happier. Well, I think you will agree that was a really fun and exciting day. But of course, it was a competition, so we have to have some results. In the zero to zero test, the 240Z did a 15.7, the 370Z did a 14.8. So victory to the newcomer. In the Hopkirk challenge, the 240Z did a 21.9, the 370Z did a 21.7. So again, a victory for the young contender. But in the autocross, with a time just two tenths faster than the 370Z, your car did manage to take the victory. So fantastic. Right. I think it's a combination of not having to brake much. And then in the finale, the road course challenge, the 370Z did a time of 56.06, which was two seconds faster wow. than the older car, which I think you could tell the dynamics and all the technology at work. But of course, a massive thank you to all of you at home. From the very moment that I submitted for the competition to the end was just a, like a dream. You know, I mean, it was amazing that it all happened so fast and that my car was actually gonna go out to Las Vegas and I got to compete with this other great car and then meet all the people from Nissan and from Motor Trend. It was just such a great experience right from the beginning. Thanks for watching. Gentlemen, Las Vegas is waiting for us. The best part about the whole thing was just being on the track for two days with the people that all enjoy being at the track. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I can't think of anything better to do, really. What do I love about cars? Um, I like driving the cars. <laughs> That's my, my favorite part is, is just to go out one night and get a milkshake. Just get in the car and I'll pull up to a light and I'll be waiting for the light to change and I'll look over and then somebody will be looking at me, smiling from ear to ear, or they'll have their camera out and I'll, oh yeah, I'm in my Z.